Okay, our next uh, team of the session is team number three, Thor. Good morning, everybody. Uh, we are team Thor. I'm Baron Roth. Uh, I'm Jing Kai. I'm Yi Young. I'm Emily. And I'm Daniel. Um, we're going to tell you about our autonomous crop drone platform today. Um, so today's farmers market, uh, farming society, basically, uh, farmers have to go around their farms and track every plot and the health of their plot manually. So this can take many, many hours because there's usually thousands of plots on your average farm. Um, so you either have to hire many employees or do the time consuming, uh, you know, manual labor process yourself. And as we all know, humans are not the best machines when it comes to doing repetitive tasks. Uh, so we figured we could do a better job with our crop drone platform. Um, so the, the crop drone platform uh, consists of an iOS application for mission planning and uploading, um, a drone to take images, uh, a computer vision backend that analyzes the images and returns the health data to a web app. Um, we also simultaneously collect LiDAR data to determine whether or not a plot has fallen over due to weather issues um, and other diseases as well. Um, so we'll get into the nitty-gritty about the technical. Oh yeah, and this is the, the system, so you have the web app, the iOS application, um, the hardware component to the, dro or to the drone. Um, so just a quick technical overview. So uh, the first thing we have is the iOS mobile location, so that uh, lets you plan autonomous missions. You can uh, put waypoints onto a 3D map and then uh, upload that to the drone and it will follow it um, and take images autonomously. Um, the second portion of the um, project is the cloud-based um, crop health algorithm that uses um, a metric called NDVI, which we'll go into further. Um, and this all runs in the AWS cloud, of course, and it's part of the app, all integrated. Um, and then we have a hardware portion, which we have uh, custom LiDAR and GPS hardware um, in order to, um, and re for, the, for the hardware we're using an Intel Edison um, and of course, the other main two components is the LiDAR sensor and the GPS. Um, and the purpose of this component is to actually determine whether uh, crops have fallen over. Um, so the LiDAR, it uh, takes distance measurements and then um, you can then uh, do altitude minus distance to find, um, to find out the actual height of the crops. And the ultimate goal of this hardware component was to um, provide a digital uh, surface model of the um, the land that you're flying over, so the crops, which is very important to farmers. Um, and the last portion of our uh, drone platform is a web app, so you can view um, all the uh, processed data um, and uh, images and everything. So uh, my main, one of my main roles was uh, designing and creating the NDVI algorithm. So first of all, what is NDVI? It's just a ratio of IR reflected light to visible uh, reflected light. Um, and it was discovered by a NASA biologist um, uh, in the 1970s, I believe. So they determined that it was a very powerful metric, actually, for determining uh, crop health. Um, so one of the important things that needed to be done um, to get this algorithm to actually work was to uh, pick a drone that, could, uh, be, that, could, that we could modify the camera lens um, in order to actually receive, in order for the camera to actually absorb the near-infrared spectrum of light, because you need that when you calculate NDVI. Um, so I also, uh, so that's how I uh, basically selected the, we selected the DJI Phantom 3 drone um, because there was a company that developed uh, camera lenses that uh, were very easy to integrate with that drone. Um, so the technologies that I used to actually implement the algorithm, I used Python um, and the very basic like image processing library pill, uh, NumPy and Matplotlib. Um, and then as you can see, there's just like a, a IR captured image and the post processed image. Um, in the post-processed image, the colder colors correspond to healthier crops, and the warmer colors uh, correspond to um, unhealthy crops or maybe just something that's not vegetation at all, like dirt, road, or uh, just other objects. Um, so the second portion that I worked on was the iOS mobile app. So the front end, um, you see a 3D map. Uh, you zoom in to your current location. You can put uh, GPS waypoints on the 3D map. Um, and as you, when you, when you touch the map, um, it's recognized as a tap gesture, and then um, the waypoints are added simultaneously to an array that would get uh, uploaded to the drone's flight controller. 
and then at the same time it's added to the map for uh, feedback to the user to know where their drone's going to actually fly. Um, then you have the waypoint configuration where you actually put in the uh, flight speed of the drone, uh, the altitude you want it to fly at for the mission, and the action you want it to take after it's done. Um, so after the drone does the mission, it takes images, it comes back to you, um, and you have access to another screen where you can download images and then finally process the images. So and additionally, I was responsible for integrating the previously described crop health algorithm with the AWS backend um, to get this all to work. So um, for the AWS backend, I used AWS S3. Um, I integrated the A uh, SDK with the iOS app. Um, and then we, uh, I used the AWS Lambda function to uh, respond to the image upload to S3 and execute the processing algorithm. Um, and then the image gets sent back to the phone, and then you can see um, basically different uh, post-processed images on the phone, um, and you can tell how healthy your crops are. Um, and one more thing, I used Objective-C for the iOS application, Python again for the <coughs> algorithm. Um, greatly used the DJI SDK for the mission planning features and interfacing with the drone. Um, and then for the back end, of course, I used AWS S3 and AWS Lambda to, uh, for the algorithm and everything. Um, so once images are processed using our Lambda function, um, I, I built a web app using Ruby on Rails entirely in the back end and HTML5 and CSS3 or SAS on the front end. Um, so there's an account system um, that automatically will fetch your images from your S3 bucket. Um, so yeah, you can see log in and then you get your latest images um, that are all post-processed in the gallery view, one click, uh, download. Um, and yeah, so I used uh, Heroku for hosting. Uh, it uses a secret domain respective to uh, your company. Um, Nokogiri was used to interface with AWS and devise for the authentication system. Uh, I primarily, primarily worked on the uh, sensors for the LiDAR, or for the hardware system. Uh, that includes the LiDAR sensor, which does the distance measurements and the GPS which uh, geotags the LiDAR data. Um, so each LiDAR point is associated with GPS data, and uh, all of that data is saved to the SD card. Um, the SD card will only save data with uh, three or more satellites connected to the GPS. This is to ensure accuracy. Um, there's really not much point saving the LiDAR data without the context associated with it. Um, the height is that the idea behind the height is it takes the, uh, the distance from the drone to the ground and subtracts it from the drone to the top of the crops to get the height data. And then we also have a gimbal design. That way, if the drone banks, the LiDAR data will still remain accurate. So my ro main role of this uh, project is for the hardware design. So on the top, you can see the schematic and the PCB design. Um, and on the bottom, you can see the PCB and the, the whole hardware system. And uh, we chose uh, Intel Edison as our microprocessor. And it will take the raw data from uh, GPS and the LiDAR uh, by using UART and the uh, PWM. And then once Intel Edison collect uh, the, the raw data, it will be further processed by the program uh, done by Emily. And then, um, and then it will save to the SD card uh, using uh, SPI. And then there's also a um, Wi-Fi connection on the Intel Edison. And then it will send to the AWS for further processing. And, um, and then there's, we, we use 4.8 volt uh, battery to charge the whole hardware system. And the battery will charge the GPS and the LiDAR directly. And then there's an um, on onboard um, regulator. It will regulate the 4.8 volt to around uh, 3.6 volt to charge the Intel Edison. And then, and then Intel Edison will produce uh, like 3.3 um, volt to charge the, uh, the SD card module. So I worked on uh, uh, AWS integration with hardware. So uh, the first picture just showed uh, how basically it works. Uh, the 
the user have to uh, connect Wi-Fi uh, at first time, and it, the board can connect Wi-Fi automatically in the future. So uh, that, then it can connect to AWS using key, key ID and the secret key, so that the data can stream to uh, it can stream LiDAR and the GPS data to AWS server. So um, then it's invoked to the Lambda. So, uh, which is the serverless uh, compute service that runs your code and uh, in response to uh, events. So finally, we just put an item into the DynamoDB. Uh, what if like board just disconnects Wi-Fi? So uh, the, we, we want to lose the data because the data is still in the SD card. And when the board uh, reconnects with Wi-Fi, so the, the system is going to continue send data to uh, AWS because like uh, because each data point has the uh, specific ID so it can continue to send in them to AWS so we'll share your video the Thor process starts by mapping out your route using our iOS application Tap along the route to create a flight path. Specify an altitude and speed. In your drone, the Thor process starts by mapping out your route using our iOS application. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Tap along the route to create a flight path. Specify an altitude and speed, and your drone will lift off, fly, and collect data hands-free. Images are captured using an infrared lens to ensure accurate NDVI images. Once the flight is completed, the drone will return to home base and you can begin the processing by selecting the latest images and pressing upload. The post-process images will then be displayed in-app and on the Thor web dashboard for further analysis. Um, yeah, so moving forward, we'd love to uh, improve the user experience of you know, both web apps and iOS apps um, and have an image library in the iOS app. Um, and then on the hardware side, um, a better gimbal design would be great um, and integrating uh, more of the data uh, received from the LiDAR into a kind of data visualization um, output for uh, both apps. Any questions? Uh, yeah, it works for all types of crops, all vegetation, really. Yeah, vegetation has an inherent desire to reflect infrared light if it's healthy. It's pretty miraculous, but pretty cool. And uh, for, for the web app or the post-processing, do you guys give any information, like how is the crop actually doing, or is it mostly just showing pictures that's still up for the farmer to decide? Yeah, so it's up to the farmer to determine um, you know, whether or not that plant should be unhealthy, because our, our specific customer does uh, a variation of um, kind of artificial selection. So, um, you know, they, they do generate different strains of plants and, and you know, expect certain results from others. So uh, we let them decide what the results say. Uh, so if I understood correctly, you use LiDAR uh, for the vegetation heights. Yep. Um, and you compare it with the altitude of the GPS. Um, what is the tolerance for the, the height of the vegetation? Or what's the resolution? Uh, it does a 40 meters range. 40 meters. Yeah, and then is, are you able to get an accurate measurement for the height of the vegetation? Uh, we have not tested it on plants themselves, but we have tested it on like uh, essentially like pieces of paper that are vertical, and that's pretty that's accurate. You may you may want to indicate who your customer is and where they are located. Yeah, so um, our customer is the brother of uh, Professor Al Sheikh, 
Um, and uh, he's located in Norway. Uh, they work for the government doing artificial selection, making sure crops can grow in the harsh conditions of Norway. Um, so unfortunately, they wouldn't let us fly there and test it out. But. <laughs> Not flying into Norway. Okay. <laughs> All right, thank you.